do make color bang. It's that time of the week where we shine the spotlight on the game changers and trailblazers in women in sport. And thank you for joining us on the Ladies Club as we show you where to get up close and very personal with Mzansi's leading ladies. Now, how do we work a conversation here on our computer? Because it's about women who are smashing through the glass ceiling in cricket officiating. I'm not just talking when I'm on Africa border, I'm talking global. Well, of course, we'd like to hear from you before we carry on with our game changer. Please do get involved with us. Our social media details are on your screen at sport at SABC at Level Motswini and just use the hashtag the ladies club. Now, we're also on Facebook as well as Instagram, the new social media platforms as they were. But let's bring it back home now. There is a new wave of women breaking cricket's so-called glass ceiling. Across the world, women are breaking new ground in male-dominated spaces and are inspiring a new generation of game changes. Today, we're joined by cricket referee coach as well, Chandra Fritz, who is making waves in cricket in the world. Let's welcome her to the Ladies Club. Good morning and welcome to the Ladies Club. Oh, thank you so much for having me here. When I first found out that you are the first, first female, first class Match matches yeah. referee in the world, I lost my mind. <laughs> I lost my mind too. I, didn't I can know. imagine. It still hasn't sunk in for me. Yeah. How does it feel for you? Well, it's quite surreal because one of the uh, scorers actually came to me and said, wait, wait a minute. Okay, they knew there was an, another match referee in India or in, and in Australia, but they'd only done one day matches and T20, but not a first class four day match. So, yeah, it took me completely by surprise. How big of a deal is it, Shandre? Mm. Well, to be the first at something is quite a big yeah. deal, I suppose. So, I think it's, I think it's quite big. <laughs> And how do you explain to someone who says, but how did you even get to that level? That's the funny bit. I didn't go looking for this. It came to me. Yeah. The, the ICC approached me to become a master. If they said, apparently, I've got the, this bossy nature or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. You've got, the I've got the right, you know, I've got the right personality for this yeah. thing. So, yeah, they just approached me and I went on this journey about a year ago. Um, getting to learn what it's like, because I didn't know what match refs did. I was very ignorant about it. Yeah. Um, and so being in this new space is quite refreshing. I like a, a different outlook on, on cricket. I love everything about cricket, so it's a different... But um, having to look at cricket from a different lens, which I absolutely love. Sure, we'll definitely continue with that conversation with Chandra a bit later, because it's quite interesting to have the first in the world on the ladies' club. It's from Zimbabwean businesswoman, Dr. Devan Ndu. She says, my advice to women all the time is, if you want a certain future, go out and create it. Conquer your fears, as that is what enslaves most women. Now, Dr. Devine saw a gap in the market for quality oriented security company. She acted on her impulse and founded Securico, a top-notch security firm in Zimbabwe. Today, she is a true champion of women's empowerment and is currently the largest employer of women in the country. We're also about to go for a quick break, but before we do, I just want to get our guests on that quote. Um, I live by that quote. Wow. You've got to be the creator of your own future destiny. It's got to be in the palm of your hand. What are, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's powerful. I think it's so apt in this world. We don't need to all work for other people. Why not yeah. blaze our own trail? Yeah. Why do we need to conform to the norms? Mm. And that's exactly what you've done. Yeah. Oh, trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for her to share the story of how she went to university to study one thing, went into another thing, engineering, teaching, and then without even telling her family, decided actually I want to be in cricket. But let's have a quick look at those news. Banyana Banyana do have a new logo. Safa recently revealed the new logo for the national women's team as they look to give them their own identity. Desiree Ellis' side have had an exciting few years as they've grown in leaps and bounds on the world stage with the Kosafa Cup champions going on to take their place also at the FIFA Women's World Cup earlier in the year. So I'm really excited to have been part of the launch of the new logo. Quick break, when we come back, we continue our conversation with our game changer, also very funny, Chandra Fritz. Stay with us.
National Lotteries Commission is celebrating 20 years, 20 years of impact in changing and uplifting communities around the country. The NLC is committed to supporting sports and recreation to build a winning nation, funding 6.5 billion rands thus far to sports and recreation. National Lotteries Commission continues to be a catalyst for social upliftment. As we continue, we are joined in studio by the former national captain of South African Women's Cricketer of the Year, Chandra Fritz, and she is our game changer today. In case you don't know her, this is her journey. It started way back when she was a player representing the Proteas in 85 wide ball international matches between 2003 and 2014. Of course, because she does, she made history when she became the first SA cricketer to score 100 runs in a T20 international back in 2010 when the Proteas women took on the Netherlands in the inaugural ICC Women's Cricket Challenge. Now today, she's still breaking new ground and is still amongst the trailblazers in cricket officiating. She recently made waves after she was added to Cricket South Africa's match referees panel. Let me leave it there because the journey, the story is hers to tell. Been there, done that, you've known everything about cricket since you were 18. Where did that love and passion come from, Shandra? Oh, playing in the streets, I suppose. Mm. That's where we all start. I mean, we, when, you, when you're out in the streets and there's uh, whatever is on the TV, whatever sporting code is happening, at the time you play whatever it is and cricket was just easy, it just came naturally. So uh, that's, that, that was the easy choice. But... As, as you started playing in the street, did you ever think, is this is something that I perhaps want to wear the green and gold for? Or I'm just playing because I love it, I'm just not playing anything else? What was the end goal in those years still? There was no end goal, though. We were just playing, we were just having fun. Like, I was with my mates outside, and yeah. we were running around playing. And, you know, when you hit the ball in the yard, then you're out, and they're making all these funny rules, and which mm. everyone tends to use, I suppose. Mm. Uh, but there was no end goal. There was just pure enjoyment and being in the moment. And when did then... It become a real thing. Like, oh, okay, maybe this is this is this is yeah. what I want to do. Funny enough, I was at aftercare uh, playing cricket with uh, <laughs> with my classmates, mm. with the guys, and they had we were going to aftercare. And this is high school. This is primary school. Primary Sorry, school. primary school at yeah. Fredless Primary. Yeah. And we went to yeah. They were all going to cricket practice, and I was left alone. And the aftercare lady said, "Well, well why don't you join them?" I was like, "I'm a girl. I can't go play mm. cricket with them." And she walked me to practice with the guys. Wow. And yeah, in, in, in the year, well, I became the captain of the boys' team. And do you still keep in touch with that teacher? <laughs> oh, and um, Jean. Oh, I haven't in years, but uh, from time to time we bump into each other, yeah. All right, so from primary school up until high school, you start playing provincial under 14. You're playing for the seniors. You were under 14, you're playing for the seniors. Mm. I'm sure that was the time that you thought, okay, this could be the green and gold kind of thing. Um, was it a reality that was setting in, or were you still thinking, a girl, cricket, protest, woman? Uh... Yeah, look, you don't think about that. I just wanted to play. I didn't think about I didn't even know there was women's cricket because I was sure. playing in the boys' team, yeah. yeah. So I was just playing, and then one of my school teachers, Mr. Kayser, said to me, but look, there's a woman playing cricket. I was like, yeah, but okay. So he's like, oh, he'll take me to trials. I went to trials at 14. I made the senior woman's side. Wow. And the 19 team as well as the senior woman's side. So, yeah, I haven't looked back since. And how was that for you? It was exciting. It was easy because I've been playing cricket with boys most of the time. So with it the sounds like you didn't even know the magnitude of your talent no. then. <laughs> <laughs> you can just play because you've been playing in the street with the guys all yeah. the time and so they come hard into you and so you just have to be tough and deal with things and so I think that helped me quite a lot. And what were some of the biggest challenges before we move on to your, your years in varsity and choosing between the sport that you love, something that you love and a career that our parents say you've got to be a nurse, a doctor, a, a civil engineer for example? The challenges. Probably just travelling to, to cricket practice because my mom and dad were both working and mm. using public transport, having to lug this massive cricket bag True. on the train. So my friends and I, Ashlyn, Kilowan and I, used to be <laughs> running for the taxi and running for the train. And, and this big With bag. a big bag and yeah. it's full and you've got to hold it like, uh, you know, like your true love close yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so that was probably the biggest challenge, but we enjoyed the commuting side of things. And then comes Matric, you're going into varsity. Uh, that, what, what was on your mind? What were you going to study at that time? You, you've ch chosen your, your subjects and you're going to this varsity to study what, to be a what? Yeah, at high school I went to a technical school to become a civil engineer. I yeah. love civil engineering. I love everything about it. And then I got into Selimbosh to do civil engineering and then I changed in the line. I realized, oh my word, if I go and do this, if I become an engineer, I won't be able to play cricket. So I jumped ship and went to a different queue and went to the teaching side of things, yeah. And did you tell your mom at that age? <laughs> no, I didn't tell anyone. What did she say when she found out? She's a 
What are you doing? Of course. She's like, are you mad? But my mom was very supportive. Yeah. Very hard, but very supportive. And you know, as long as I look to make a success out of everything, anything I do. So she was, she was okay, surprisingly. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about your journey in wearing the green and gold for the very first time. Oh, you're going to make me cry. Take yeah. me back to that moment. <sighs> yeah, I was 17. Sure. I was 17, yeah. I was still in high school and... High school. Yeah. It's quite, it was quite surreal because I came off a really good few years, like yeah. playing seriously good cricket and just scoring a lot of runs. Yeah. And, and yeah, I made the national side at 17. I was, was quite young at the time. Yeah. And it, it, yeah, you're gonna be, I'm getting all emotional, yeah. But it just, it just, just a blur. All, and then the, the one, when you realize you have the green and gold is when you sing the national anthem. Sure. And every single time I sing the national anthem or hear it being sung, I tear up. Like, and sport makes me tear up. Yeah, and, and <laughs> why is that, that it made you tear up at 17, wearing the green and gold for the very first time? Oh, the pride, representing your, you're representing your people. You're representing yeah. a legacy, a generation, your family, you know, your community. You're representing all of that. It's mm. not just yourself and the green and gold. Two decades later. And you've been extraordinary. <laughs> I try. What is it that has set you apart from everybody else who's tried, come in and kind of faded by the wayside? Um, the fear of being average. I think that's my biggest fear. I don't want to be average. We get this one beautiful life to live and I want to be the best at what I do. And I know it sounds cocky sometimes to people, but we get one life. We've, uh, God has given me a specific talent. And so I have to give thanks by, uh, and honor my God and my family by the way I do things. Not talking about now, we'll talk about that after the break. What was the biggest highlight of your career? Becoming the first South African to score T2000. And some always say, oh, but it's against the Netherlands or whatever. I say, but then someone else would have done it before me then. It so, hasn't been done, it's still a yeah. first. And it's not the first woman, the first, uh, not, the, not the first woman, the first South African, the first cricketer to do it. So that, that is my, for me, my, the highlight of my career. And what, what, what would you like to take into the next generation when you speak to them and up and coming and they look at you like you are the epitome of greatness to them? <sighs> Jeez, thank you. But it just blaze your own trail. There are no boundaries anymore in this life. You know, why must we conform? Mm. We are, we are individuals unique each and every one of us if you yeah. want to do great things do it we're off to a quick break when we come back we get to hear the other side of what exactly makes a chandra take stay with us The National Lotteries Commission is celebrating 20 years, 20 years of impact in changing and uplifting communities around the country. The NLC is committed to supporting sports and recreation to build a winning nation, funding 6.5 billion rand thus far for sports and recreation. National Lotteries Commission continues to be a catalyst for social upliftment. And let's get right into the trailblazer today. It's time to take a look at the movers and shakers who led the way for women in sport. And our trailblazer today is South African cricketer umpire Lauren Achenbach. She is a young, talented cricket match official who has become a standard bearer for women's empowering in South Africa. Blazed the trail as the first woman to empire in a senior men's provincial league match. She was one of the on-field empires in a match between Eastern Province and KwaZulu Natal inland in the CSS Provincial T20 Cup. Now, I wanted to talk slightly about women such as yourself and Lauren because um, I, even when I spoke to you off air on radio about Lauren, I thought you guys are the first of of women that are breaking the glass ceilings. You, obviously, the entire world, her, still within South Africa. How important is it to have women such as Lauren, as young as she is, breaking those glass ceilings? Absolutely paramount. And Lauren's a fantastic um, young lady, too. We are actually very close. Yeah. She and her, her mom actually bought me the coins to toss with. So they got me the big five oh, wow. coins. So, oh, my word, they're so amazing with me. And, and we've got such a beautiful um, relationship because we, like we said, we always talk about the responsibility of what we are doing mm -hmm. and trying to do it to the best of our ability. So Lauren is amazing. And, and umpiring, you're watching her umpire, you realize she is exceptional. And how big of a task is it? to be the first in the world and also the first female 
on your shoulders, what kind of a responsibility does that weigh on you? It just keeps you on your toes to be better and to study harder and to make sure you know exactly what it is you need to do because you are leading, you're the first. So you um, need to lead the right way. I mean, I believe there's only one way to do something and it's the right way. So that, that, that's what it is. It keeps you on your toes. All right, let's talk about now the transition from player to referee. Did you umpire before? Do you go from umpire to referee or how does that transition work? So I'm not an umpire, I'm a match ref. So mm. I'm, the match ref is in charge of the whole event if there's a, an event. So um, I think they look for uh, years in cricket. Uh, I don't know how, quite how they do the selection, but I've played cricket for a long time mm. with men and women, and I've coached men and women. Mm. And um, so the match referee thing is, I think it's more your understanding of the game, and I commentate from time to time. So I think it's a combination of all of those. I didn't umpire, player umped. I'm yeah, not really yeah. good at umpiring. Yeah. But as a match official, I think they look for a certain personality, but certain traits, I suppose, and then also, again, your understanding of the game. And tell me about the other hat that you wear as a coach. Oh, I love coaching. Uh, I love my guys <laughs> and girls that I coach. I always joke, I tell them I have 65 sons, and you see, my boys will always do this. Yeah, yeah. There's only one number. We only believe in one number. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's number one. Yeah, yeah, so we won the league three years in a row. But I love the coaching side of things. I love developing who, who young Who are you talents. coaching there? The univer uh, UWC men. Uh-huh. Yeah, UWC. So I coach all the men there. So I'm, I'm the coach. Uh, I am in charge of the second team, and I was in charge sure. of the ladies. But I coach every single one. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with all of the cricketers at the club. And how important is that role to you? That role, wow, um, that is a special role. I learned so much about myself and about others. I, as a coach, you have to be a bad guy all the time, and I was willing to do that, and I knew why. And it, it's quite tough sometimes going home and knowing that people are actually sometimes upset with you. But True. once they understand, now that I've left, I get a lot of messages from the guys saying that they appreciate that they're... Um, that how tough I was on them and they realize now why and, and all of these things. So This is such an iconic <sighs> moment for you. Um, when? Yeah, we've got it. We've got everything. But seeing it, because I get goosebumps because of, it's, this is at Wanderers. Yes. Just being there, just this looking at it. last week. Yeah. Yeah. My guys. How does this make you feel? Very proud and I need to lose a few kilos. <laughs> 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 Women, we always have guests that look at themselves yeah. and say that. That's not true. Uh, look at this. This is, this is know, a momentous was, mom moment. But I had the greatest guys at the number one umpire in South Africa. Yeah. And the number five, Brad White is number five, and uh, Sean George is number one. And they were so amazing with me. Yeah. They did my first shadow match with me, and it was so amazing to have them for my first official game. We have such a great chemistry, and uh, they teach me so much all the time. I mean, sure. it's and fantastic. You wake up every day, you do what you love. And as you said, you get paid to do it. Grateful. I'm like, I don't know what I've done in this life to deserve this, but thank you, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just grateful. Like, I'm in a phase of my life, in the best stage of my life where, that I've ever been. I'm happy. Like, just and then, happy. And then coming back from, coming from Cape Town and the community that you come from, how important is it for you to help, maybe, or give back, or do you do such, such work around the community? Well, with the cricket job, it's an it's a eight-day eight day week job. Sure, not, sure. So I haven't been no able weekends. to. No weekends. No yeah. weekends. But I did work for an NGO that, that does that type of work. So we go out and do coaching clinics and that sort of thing. But I make sure, whenever I go back, I go back to the street I grew up in. My gran wow. and my, or my aunt still live there. So I, w I was there last night. I was there, um, and I go and make sure I get... I still spend time with the people that I, I used to play in the street with and, you know, the kids see you, they know who you are and to greet and still kick ball with them from time to time and sometimes jump in the game because mm. they all want to bowl you out when you arrive <laughs> and they're like, come back, come you, come back, I yeah, showed you yeah, how yeah, to do this, yeah. I showed you how to do this. Yeah. So, they just want to like... Yeah, so they just want to, yeah, so it's nice. And what lights your fire? The drive, like, I'm quite ambitious, so I, I just want to be good at whatever I do. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm very competitive, so I, if someone tells me you can't, I say, okay, yeah, let me show you. That's the more yeah. reason to show them yeah, that yeah, you can. Yeah. Keep telling me no, yeah. keep telling me no, it's fine. And what inspires you? Wow, my mother. She's a strong woman, wow. You can make me cry on air. No. <laughs> yeah, and my grandmother, like, they, they lived in a time where these things weren't possible. True. How can I not want to be great at whatever it is I do? Mm.
So, yeah. And how important, important of a role has your mom and your grand played? You're massive. My mother's really strong. She always taught us to think independently and critically most of all. And to make your own mind up and, and have a backbone and don't be afraid to, to stand up for what you believe in, you know? So, pivotal. It's massive, massive. If she was sitting right next to you there during this interview... I'll be crying. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I see her, I cry. Like, it... Even before I went out, uh, I had to phone in the morning of my first game. I phoned her yeah. and said, Mommy, I was like, crying Aww. like a little baby. Yeah. She's like, don't worry, you'll be fine, whatever. And she's quite hardcore, so yeah. she always is soft. With every new venture in my life, I have to speak to her before. Just to be like, OK, yeah, OK. And what does okay, she still this. say? She just says, you're good enough and you'll be good. Yeah. You've worked hard for this. You deserve mm. this. Mm. And God is with you, always. So you've taken after your very tough mom. Oh, yeah. I think I'm a lot like... Uh, mm. <laughs> oh, if she sees it, she'll be telling me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she'll be happy about that. Because I look exactly like my dad, but I'm my mother, I think. Mm. Yeah. And she's proud of you? Oh, absolutely. She's my biggest champion, always. Like. What is it that you'd still want to do? Yes, it's a new role that you, you've come into as, as a match referee, but what is it that you still want to do to make your family proud? And how important is family in your life? Oh, family is everything, isn't it? Uh, to make them proud, continue to do good things. I think I can be a better sister sometimes. I'm quite, quite tough with my sisters, but um, they are, you know, they're your ride or die, you know? True. From, like, we were best mates since we were young and I think we've drifted apart now that we're all grown up and stuff mm. and so maybe just to be a bit closer to them. What kind of music inspires you? Wow, everything. Like I like the old stuff like Sadao Watanabe, mm. uh, family friend of mine, a big mentor of mine is Nazrin Davids who still lives wow. in, in, in the street that I grew up in and she's refined my music taste, the Anna Ross and... Oh, listen uh, to you yeah, now. Akulaleki is my jam, my morning jam. So wow. I've got quite a few. I love Mariah Carey, uh, you know, typical stuff. But Before a, a big match then, what steps or what traditions do you... Processes? Processes do you follow? Making sure that, okay, the cup is like this, da, da, da. You know, people have, okay, yeah, I yeah, need to... Yeah, they're yeah. yeah. The, um, Me, I must pray in the morning. Yes. I must pray in the morning, I must make my bed. And make your bed. I must, I must. Oh Otherwise, gosh. I feel like the whole world is going to fall apart. I must make my bed. I, I was actually selling uh, Jonesy, um, Stephen Jones, uh, what, my head, former head coach, yeah. selling him if I, I, one morning I felt like not making my bed. And I turned around and I went and I made my bed. Are you serious? I'm serious. Otherwise, I feel the days, that, that is the only thing I have. So you pray, you make your bed, and yeah, then... And then I'm good. Then I must listen to music to chill. Yeah. And what message do you have for the young ladies that would be watching you, want to be exactly where you are? Believe in yourself and do great things. There are no boundaries in this life anymore. Mm. Whatever you want, go and get it. Mm. What's next for Chandra? <sighs> What's next? The journey. Uh, learning, probably working for the ICC again, doing bigger events, you know. I just, the con and to continue to learn and to grow. Are you in love? I am. Do you love love? I love love. <laughs> I think. knew you were going to ask that question. <laughs> How did you know? Uh, when you, I, I just don't. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> You're naughty. I'm, I'm so glad I got it out of you. Look at you turning oh, pink. And I no. At least I found a small little spark there by you. Uh, yeah. It's new, it's fresh. I can I, see. I'm happy. Yeah? I'm happy. Yeah. You've got like bubbles inside and... <laughs> oh, my mother's going to give me a hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us with the Ladies Club. It's been so absolutely much. beautiful. Been wish you the pleasure. best of luck with everything that you touch. I, I really, really, I admire you. Thank you so much. And you are my woman crush, eh? You look like Nicki Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you so much for spending it with us. You are welcome, of course, to send us your ideas of trailblazers or stories about women in sport that continue to inspire you right here on SABC. Next week, we'll see you same time, same place. Nelby Solaka, I am Lebu Mutswedi. And remember that greatness is earned but never given. Goodbye. <laughs>